This program is brought to you by Guiding Light Assembly. I'll quickly read the word from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4 to 9. It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, which they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are going, they are, so they are doing to you also. Now therefore heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because at the entrance of your word brings light. And as we go into your word today, we just ask that you light our hearts and you lead us into that place which you want us to be individually and corporately in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have a short word to share with us this morning. And I just called it the final ballot. The final ballot. And it's not a coincidence. It does occur to me that if the elections are not postponed, I'm not prophesying doom. I don't want them to be postponed. But if they are not, we will be electing a new leader or we'll start electing leaders from, next, from this coming Saturday the 25th of February. And the first thing I'd like to remind us of this morning is that our elections are not the World Cup. It's not a gathering of clubs or parties that will come together every four years and then when one wins or if our party wins, we get emotionally high and if they lose, we get very sad. I'm sure someone is saying, which one is emotionally high? <laughs> Sometimes they're just high in our emotions. And they take over us. And that's what we see. So even today, if you are supporting one party, and you're in the midst of people who are not in that party, and you open your mouth, and you speak, you will be dealt with. But if you're in the midst of those who are supporting your party, they will be happy. If you are with friends that support you, they will encourage you and they will tell you to ride on. But if your friends are not supporting your candidates, that's when you start hearing about tribalism, nepotism, it's in your favor, you are doing well, and all of that. So many things. And what happens most times is we get lost in the election process that we forget what happens after. I thank God that as a nation we've developed, we're no longer seeing things like one dollar will be one naira. Nobody would dare say that again. And that is how our democracy has been evolving. I'm sorry, I'm someone who likes to praise the government of the day. Because we've put them there. And when they are doing good, we talk about the good they are doing. And when they are not doing so well, we tell them you can do better. Because I understand that's how you address government officials. But you see, as children of God, we will do what it takes to place a ruler over us. One whom we have checked that their manifesto will indeed manifest. And we've seen that these ones are capable. They have a track record and they can do what it takes to lead. And most of the times, what happens is after the election process, and everybody is happy and people have expressed, you know, wherever their emotions are, or wherever their joy tends to go, everything now seems quiet and we expect a miracle overnight, right? We expect that everything will, will, will work out fine, and that will be the end. But there is more to it. Now, I read the story of the children of Israel and how they were just 
they wanted a king. And yes, it, it, it is a good thing. It was a good thing. I mean, they wanted, they looked at other nations around them. And they said, look, these guys, they have an army. They can see their sovereignty clearly defined. And they just want things to work. And if we remember those days, if you don't have a strong army, you can go out to farm in the morning. But by the time you come back home, your possessions, your family, everything is gone. And you will now start, you don't even know where to start from. And it gets difficult to survive. Every day you wake up, you have to be ready for war. That is how it was in those days. But there was one thing that, there was a structure the Lord had given them. In which he wanted them to rely on him 100%. And that was placing judges over them. But for one reason or the other, they felt that was not working. And the Lord was trying to warn them to say that, look, this king you're asking for is going to make your children workers or slaves. He's going to tax you. He's going to take a tenth of your supplies. If that is what you want, I will give it to you. And why am I sharing this? Is to say that God wants to get involved in our election process. So for some of us, it is difficult. And I will encourage us. Because we've been so downcast. I know how long it took me to get my PVC. I went four times. And even the fourth time, it was a miracle. And, but I got it. And I know people have their stories. And we all see the impact of the things that are about to happen. The elections are coming and it seems everything is just shutting down. We thank God that we've gotten over the false scarcity. Now it's Naira scarcity. And we see the confusion everywhere. We see people protesting before that they don't have money. And then all of a sudden we see people protesting that they want to deposit their money. So even as a president, I'm sure everybody is wondering what is going on. And it is causing a big issue with leadership and also with the children of God. But you see, we owe it to ourselves to appoint a new leader. We do. Because we deserve one. And it's in accordance with the constitution that we have set off. But I'll move quickly into this. It's after the time of Moses and Joshua. It just seemed as if they had no godly leaders anymore. And they were always looking for what was missing. Because even though they had judges, they couldn't see someone who could take them to the place of battle and letting them know that this is God taking us into battle. So what happened? They wanted to appoint a leader and God gave them Saul. Saul was from the, 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 the least respected tribe. And I believe God was trying to prove a point that it's not going to be about the strongest tribe. It's going to be about me showing you that I can use whoever I want to use. I can use the least qualified to do things that will exceed what the most qualified will do. And that is how we, the children of God, are. There are times when it seems like we're in the minority and God is saying, yes, that is how I will use you. And there are times when it seems like the majority and God is saying, greater works shall you do. And one thing that happened with Saul then was even Saul himself couldn't believe this was going to happen. What did the Bible use in describing him? He was tall, he was handsome. Those two things. And what was he looking for? He was looking for donkeys that were lost. And those days, donkeys were like, they were, they were you know, treasures. It was like the bands of those days. And he was looking for it. And the Lord told Samuel, this is the one. And Samuel went and chose him and anointed him. And everybody was happy. And I like to read a part of the scripture that, 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 that struck me at that point. I'll go to 1 Samuel chapter 9. And this is from verse 15 to 16. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. What I want us to pick there is you shall anoint him commander. 
And if you go to chapter 10, from verse 9 to 11, at this point, some things happen. But moving there, when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. You know, I was just trying to put some puzzles together. If you can hold this up, verse 10. As I walked into church this morning, the Kines GBK was just reminding us that it's a year tomorrow, tomorrow, that we got a word in this house. A word of prophecy which we have been running with. And a lot of people have testified over it. And if you've not heard the testimonies, we heard a lot of testimonies during the watch night service. One thing that struck me was a lot of people were testifying about the Lord, the Lord healing people from cancer. And that means that even for us, for a set time, a word has come to sustain us. That is what we should rely on as children of God. And we've looked at it. The elections are coming. And what is going to happen is this. Some people will be happy. Some people will not be happy. Because for the first time in our nation, or for the first time that I know, sorry, we have three major contenders. Usually we have two. And everybody thinks he's one of these two. So indeed, the democracy is evolving, and we give thanks to God for that. But beyond that, God is reminding us this morning that the anointing that we carry is giving us a change of heart. And if you look at what happened to them at this time, when they were changing leaders, they were living with a change of heart. What do I mean by that? The person God anointed was the one that was having the change of heart. And I'm going somewhere. If we look at verse 10, so when they came to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied amongst them. I'm not saying the pastors or the prophets are going to be the presidents or the governors or the leaders. I'm saying that as we who are the royal priesthood, who are the chosen generation, the Lord is going to place us in strategic places that we will be able to overcome and take over decision-making issues of this land. As little as you voting is one of them. As little as you striving in your business is one of them. As little as you excelling in your job and your career, it's one of them. So that when they are looking for people, they will not say this one is tall and handsome, that is why. They will look for substance. And they will say that this person carries the spirit of the Lord. Amen? And you see, even though Saul was filled with the spirit, he missed a lot of things. I won't say he was the worst leader. I just think he focused more on sacrifice than obedience. That was what he did. He focused more on sacrifice than obedience. That's the summary. So things that he shouldn't do, he would want to do them. He would want to take the place of Samuel who had anointed him king. That's what he was doing. That was the main issue he had. And because of that, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord did what? Left him. But you know how wonderful God is? Even though this was not what he predestined. And the children of Israel said, we want a king. You know what God did? He called Samuel and he says, you will anoint another person as king, even before asking. And this is the crux of the message this morning. And I'm going to 1 Samuel verse 16, chapter 16, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him from reigning over Israel? How long will you mourn for Saul? I don't know what it is that we had placed so much hope on. And it's not going the way we planned. I'm not going to talk about our leaders because we always look for someone to blame. I'm talking about ourselves now. What is that thing that you've placed your hope in and you have been true to yourself? That I've told myself if I get this contract, it's going to change my generation forever. If I marry this person, I will forever be happy. If I can just get this job, it's the game changer. If this and this could happen, and we've been doing it, and the Lord is saying this morning, how long will you mourn over it? Because the Lord is not choosing that which is dependent on man. 
is telling us this morning that he's going to take us to that place where we will learn to depend on him. And he's been leading us in the last couple of weeks. Last week, we, we, we got a sermon on, on, on prayer. Very powerful. Before that, we, we got a message from, from Pastor Dewey just revealing our identity and for us to know who we are in Christ. And even knowing who we are in ourselves. And we also got a message on the choices that we make. And there is a reason why we find ourselves in Nigeria and as Nigerians. And going back to verse, chapter 16, verse 11. The Lord instructed Samuel, he said, fill your horn with oil and go. Fill your horn with oil and go. You see, before this time, Samuel too was downcast. Because he expected so much more from Saul. So much. And he was looking at it that this is the person that I anointed. That God called me to anoint. And at some point he was prophesying just like me. And I was thinking that I found another prophet. Because at that, point, at that time, the children of Israel had rejected the sons of Samuel as well. And he was getting to that point where he was saying, look, I'm old and everything is going to be fine. And he went crying to the Lord. And what did the Lord say? The Lord said, fill your horn and go. I know one of the words the Lord gave this house at the beginning of this year is that we will know him as the horn of our salvation. And when we say the word horn, it means strength. So where you find your place of strength this morning, feel it. If you know your place of strength is in the place of prayer, feel it. If you know it's in the place of worship, feel it. If you know it's in the place of the word, feel it. So when you get into that situation and they bring it before you, what do you do? You feel your horn. Let people wonder, a case is before you and you are dancing, you are feeling your horn. They come and they report someone to you and you start speaking in tongues, you are feeling your horn. You come and they tell you that, oh, this has happened and you tell everybody, just be still. You are feeling your horn. And that is what the Lord is saying this morning. And have I titled this the final ballot. We will vote come Saturday and we will get a new leader. Who has instructed by the authorities. We will vote. But the Lord is saying this morning, there has to be a new leader in you. That has to emerge this season. A leader that will be able to say this is what the Lord wants. And this is where the Lord is taking me to as a person. And this is what the Lord is taking us to as a nation. And I will take my position as a leader. And how are we going to do that? We are going to fill our hands. For some of us, we we already move with the anointing. with, With the anointing oil. If you need to anoint your business again, go back and anoint it. If you need to anoint your head again, go back and anoint it. Whatever you need to do, just fill your horn and go. It's not the time to start blaming people to the left or to the right. Samuel could have, could have stayed there and I'm sure what he was crying to the Lord was, was that everybody around me is not doing what they should do. So if you own your business and your workers are not doing what they need to do, you go back and fill your horn. Because the moment people saw Samuel step out, what happened? There was hope again. And what did the Lord ask Samuel to do? Because all this time, people didn't go back to Samuel. They didn't go back to him, unlike before. And the Lord just said, fill your horn and go. And if you read through from there to verse 13... Samuel was going to repeat the same process again. And when he got to the house of Jesse, they brought out all the brothers of David. And of course, what happened? They brought out the first one who was tall. I'm sure the first thing Samuel said was, God, even if this is not you, never again. But he was looking at everyone. And I will just stop with the last verse. When they brought in David, they said he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. 
Saul was good looking. David was good looking. When Saul was presented, it was said that he was the tallest person around. But yet, he couldn't see himself as a leader. And the Lord is saying this morning that we shouldn't find ourselves in a place where we would judge things by appearance. Where we would judge things by what we hear or what we see. That we need to put on our robe of discernment. And we need to dissect everything with the word of God. And that is the new season is taking us to corporately and individually. And I implore us that at this point, we should see ourselves as God's elect. The ones he has chosen for a time like this. And I'm not going to say what he has chosen you for. Or give you that word for it. He's going to tell you as a person. And he's going to lead people to you. But if you are not in that place where your horn is filled, then whatever you hear, you will get carried away by it. Some people have said if a certain person wins, they will leave the country. They can. Some people have said if a certain person wins, they will go and pay all their old taxes. They can. Some people have said if a certain person wins, I'll be scared of going to church. It means you are scared before. Every single thing that is happening to us now, God is in it, and God is with us. And he's saying we should fill our heart and go. God bless you.